mile in 20 seconds. What's it like? It's fast, close, tight. Great racing, lots of passing. Anything can happen. It's really tough. Very treacherous. And we call in the business a bull ring. And down below, there it is, the ring. New Hampshire International. And we're here in Loudon, New Hampshire for the New England 200, the last oval of this 1995 PPG and E-Car World Series season. Hello and welcome, I'm Paul Page. This is the day that could begin to determine the championship. It is the first opportunity that Canadian Jacques Villeneuve may actually score his championship so long awaited. In the points right now, he obviously is well ahead. If he can leave this race, with a 45-point difference over any competitor, he leaves this race as the champion. But can he do it? Is it really that easy? Not here at Loudoun, because things happen fast, they happen quick, and anything can happen. Take the start just last year, as they came down for the green flag. Everybody went everywhere, but most notably, Jack Veneuve ended up against the wall, and it was a pointless day for him. And today, he starts in 15th position. That's the worst start that he has ever had in his IndyCar career. So for him, today may be an uphill battle. But there are some great stories here today, too. Let's go trackside and Gary Gerald. Paul, no question. We've got the ingredients for another absolute whirlwind on this bullring when you consider only one second separates the top 20. And who's on the pole? How about the rookie from Brazil, Andre Ribeiro, the ninth different pole winner this year, the second rookie to do it, Honda-powered Firestone tires. He was sensational at nearly 178 miles per hour. Looked like he had it locked up. And then all of a sudden, late in the session, there came the veteran from Italy. His name, Teo Fabi. He came within three hundredths of a second as he put his Ford Cosworth Power Goodyear tire machine right here alongside on the front row. Tremendous speed on one lap. Now they've got to do it for 200 laps with 24 challengers right behind them. So you got the youngster from Brazil up front. You got the veteran from Italy alongside. Where are the Americans you're saying? Right behind us in row two and Jan Bikas is there. That's right, Gary. On row number two, we have two of the hardest charging drivers here on the circuit, both Americans, however, with different engine, tire, and chassis specifications. First of all, Scott Pruitt, of course, Firestone tires, Lola chassis, Ford power. We know how much he loves the ovals after winning the Michigan 500. Now, right next door, the ultra-aggressive Robbie Gordon with a different package again, Goodyear tires, Raynard chassis, and a Ford power plant. Now, we know Robbie Gordon loves to go to the outside here on a one-mile oval. You think maybe in turn number one he might think about going to the outside of Teo Fabi? We're only moments, Paul, from finding out. And then there's the ovals themselves. Derek Daly, when drivers first come to an oval, they're scared to death. And then they decide that they really like them. And you know, the strange thing is, no matter how many times you come to the same oval, they continue to be scary because of the sheer speed you have to run between these concrete walls and be mistake-free. But if you get a car to handle well, you will not have a better afternoon's racing than on a one-mile oval. And to win, the key is aggression? Oh, aggression is rewarded here so much because these corners are relatively tight for an oval, which means the driver can contribute greatly by hustling the car. But aggressive moves, inside or outside, can make huge difference is here as we saw in 93 in that titanic battle with Mansell and Tracy. Now when we're talking aggression though that's something normally in a veteran. Our pole sitter Andre Ribeiro his first ever pole. And the veterans you mentioned let's just pick two Michael Andretti and Paul Tracy they're well back down on the grid but they are so good in aggressive racing situations during the race but Ribeiro now no matter how much talent he has let's face it we cannot expect him to have the confidence or the experience or the aggression level to run in traffic as well as these veterans. So I believe he will get a lesson in race track management this afternoon. All right, well, the command to start engines has just rung out. Andre Ribeiro sits there on the pole, Teo Fabi to your left. As the balloons fly, and when we come back, we'll be ready to race. Well, the cars are rolling now, and as already suggested, it's a very interesting lineup for the New England 200. On the pole, Andre Ribeiro, his first ever pole, comes with a brand new track record. Teo Fabi will be alongside. This is his third front row start of the year. In the second row, Scott Pruitt, and it equals his best ever for the Michigan 500 winner. 
And outside, it'll be Robbie Gordon. He won easily this season on the one-mile oval at Phoenix. In row three, Christian Fittipaldi has four top ten finishes in five oval races this year. And Jimmy Vassar, he's finished in the top ten in both of his previous Loudon starts. The fourth row, Mauricio Guzman. One of only two drivers to be running at the finish at every oval race this season. And Jill DeFerrin. His best finish came on the oval at Milwaukee. In row five, Michael Andretti. The Toronto winner has a second and a fifth in his two previous starts here. And Adrian Fernandez, he's finished every race since Indy, and all of them in the points. In row six, it's Brian Herta and Juan Manuel Fangio. In row seven, Raul Boisel, who is starting in his spare car after a crash in the morning warm-up. And Paul Tracy. And Jack Villeneuve in row eight. Only one of his five career wins have come on an oval. And Emerson Fittipaldi will be alongside. Row nine, Al Anser Jr. and Eddie Cheever. The tenth row, Alessandro Zampedri. And Bobby Rahal, the winner of the first IndyCar race here. Row 11, Marco Greco and Carlos Guerrero. The twelfth row, Buddy Lazier and Stefan Johansson. In row 13, Eliseo Salazar and Hiro Matsushita, who starts last because he was underweight and his qualifying time was disallowed. And here today, 200 laps with the fuel windows starting about lap 62, extending through 69. And take a look at that one fact. The top 20 are separated by less than a second. There is the breakdown in today's field, chassis and engine. So we're ready to go. Honorary starter here today, somewhat hidden at the moment, but it's Richard Luger, the senior senator of Indiana, who was mayor of Indianapolis for many years and certainly knows and understands and loves his IndyCar racing. And we saw the accident last year. One of the problems here in New Hampshire is cold tires. These cars have 800 horsepower that tends to break away these rear tires. Bozell crashed this morning, and Johansson crashed in practice on cold tires. So what's the start? Already the PPG pace car cycles off on the back side of the circuit. This is turn three as Andre Ribeiro, the rookie pole sitter and track record holder now, brings the field through the third turn into turn four, begins to pick up the pace, watching for that green, and here we go. Dale Fabi immediately jumps into the front. Robbie Gordon coming up to challenge on the outside. Fields safely through one and two, screaming down the back stretch. It's Teo Fabi, and we've got an accident coming off of two. Accident off of two. Fernandez. Fernandez was the guy involved last year as well. Car badly damaged on the left side. This is Adrian's second big crash of the weekend here. On Friday, he was the second fastest car in practice, and he had a very, very big crash coming off turn four. So we mentioned it not 15 seconds earlier. Cold tires on the first lap of these races. These cars are very difficult to handle. You could actually listen as the safety crew asks, is he all right? Apparently a nod to the affirmative. When you hit these concrete walls this hard, sometimes the driver gets dazed. He is quite happy to sit there. He's quite happy to sit there and wait for these experienced safety crews to get to him. Well, Pierzee's all right as he starts to climb out of the car. There is Rick Gallus, the car owner, and the remainder of the crew as they take a look to see what happened. Adrian's okay and walks away. Derek, here's the way it's set up. Coming off turn two, you can see he loses it by himself. And once you get away, once the car gets away from you here, it's a one-way ticket to the hard, unforgiving concrete wall. And although that car may not look destroyed, it is very, very heavily damaged. You see him down on the inside, bottom of the picture. We can take a look from our in-car camera. We've been over his shoulder all weekend here. Here's turn one. Just snapped around quickly on him. You could see he made around turn one. Then the uh, these are tight corners here. But he makes around turn one, gets wide. The back gets away from him all by himself. And when that happens, 
these concrete walls do an awful lot of damage to these Indy cars. Only about seven very lucky drivers right behind him. Look right in the middle of the frame there as he loses the back end and takes a, a very hard hit with the wall. His second of the weekend and this morning warm up. That's where Bussell got into the wall as well. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Rick Ellis has been a very, very difficult weekend, and it really puts a damper on what had been a terrific second half of the season for this team. Yeah, Gary, we're, we're just unfortunate things like this happen. Uh, you know, Adrian did a great job all weekend, even though he had that problem. The car was fast, and uh, we felt like we had a good race going today, but unfortunately it didn't work out. And uh, You know, one thing, when we hit the fence, we hit it together, and when we win, we win together. So this isn't an Adrian's fault or the team's fault or anything. It's just something that happened. We just have to live with it. Thank you, Rick. All right, so a lot of debris to clean up on the track right now, and that gives us an opportunity to take a break as well, catch our breath, as the New England 200 is yellow right after turn number two. On the ground, so when he exits the pit during the pit stop, be careful. So the conversation with Robbie Gordon as you ride on board, we're at the New England 200 in Loudon, New Hampshire. Teo Fabi jumped the start and got a good jump on Ribeiro, as did Robbie Gordon. But what about Robbie Gordon? We've watched him all season long. He's young, brash, and he hates to lose. I used to ride motorcycles every day after school, and I had one teacher that wrote home to my parents and said, um, you know, Robbie's not concentrating on school. All he wants to do is race. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the bad boy out there, but I, you know, I'm just definitely not going to be one of those drivers you can take advantage of and walk all over out there. I like to win races just as much as the next guy, and, and whatever it takes to win races, we'll do. I'm comfortable when I'm doing those kind of things, but um, you know, I, I think I react better under pressure. If you can't run with the big dogs, go home. <laughs> I tell you, he's fresh, but he is a good guy and fun to be around. Robbie Gordon, watch for him. Wonder what he's going to get, an, another off-road championship first or an IndyCar championship? Both are very likely. This is Adrian Fernandez, only his third DNF of the season. He DNF'd at Australia and at Indianapolis, but this was Friday here, Derek. On the other end of the racetrack. Now watch the black patch. He drives onto it right there. Then he gets in trouble. Watch this. Now watch the flame. Gearbox smashes into the back of the wall. That was Friday. And then, of course, at the opposite end of the racetrack, on lap one, it all went wrong again. This is into turn one. Makes it safely through. Now he gets in trouble. Listen. He had a headache on Friday night, and he may have another one now. And Rick Gallus may have a headache when he writes the check to Rick fix Gallus two. Rick has a heartache right now. So they've gotten the car off the track. They still have quite a bit of debris, and they're a little bit concerned about oil that may be laid down there in the first and second turn. We'll be back. Andre Ribeiro, 